In today's video, we'll be creating straight sections, uh, also creating polygons here and then twisting it at the end. So we'll be going over a few different examples of how to, instead of using pipes, create different sections here for developing any wireframe structure. All right, so for this video, what I'm using is the design for this dome that I'm trying to develop. And the idea is to take these lines and turn them into rectangular sections where you can actually pick the size of the strut. So I'll go here to structure lines. I'll change graft and go to list item. And this way I can show you the process just on one item. So I'll take the structure lines, which are these that have been applied to this surface. And I can plug that into the list here. As you can see, I picked this one down here, but we can always change which one we're going to. So let's go to five and let's change the index to a different, maybe one of these up here. Let's go to this one. Okay. So now that we picked one of the segments, there's uh, a quick way of doing it. And I'll share that one with you before I share the one that's a little bit more complicated. And to do this, We'll first go to endpoints and let's disable the preview on all of this stuff so we can just work on this segment. Now with endpoint, there's another component that I like to use called plain normal. And with this one, we can use the start point as our origin and the Z axis as our line. What this will do is give us a plane that is aligned with the location of that line. So now that we have this construction and reference frame here, we can use that for our design. So we'll go to pipe and we'll change the radius to 0.1. Let's change the caps to round. Now, the reason why I said this is a quick way of doing it is because what we're going to do is create a bounding box around this pipe. So I'll go to bounding box and I'll use this reference plane as the input and this pipe as the content. What it does, it'll take any pipe and turn it into a bounding box around it. So if we take all of these structure lines and we graph them, you'll see that it'll actually do it to all of them. So let's disable the preview on this. Notice that now we have straight sections that intersect at the corners. And if we take away the caps, it'll only go to the point. This is the quick way of doing it, but it doesn't allow us to pick the exact size of this. So for that, um, I'm going to show that in the next step is how to turn this into a square section that we can pick the dimensions of. So let's go back a little bit and instead of grafting it all, We'll do it to one section. We'll go all the way back to our reference plane and to our point. So no, now what we need to do is move this and this start point relative to this plane. To do that, there's a component called deconstruct plane and we can use this to move in the x and y direction which are going to be this is the x and this would be the y direction so let's go ahead and move the start point and using amplitude For the X, we can move
in that direction. The amplitude, we'll say 1.5. Now we'll move this point again, this time in the y direction. So I'll bring, bring in the amplitude component, plug in the y-axis into the vector, and we can plug in this vector into the motion. Notice that it moves it down to this location. Let's bring in another slider. We'll take this and copy it. And we'll lower this number. We'll make this one a little bit larger. Cool. Now that we've moved this point, we need to do the same thing in the opposite direction. So what do I do? I'm going to take these two points and just copy them. So I'll slide it here, hold down Alt, and instead of the vector being positive, we're going to move it in the negative direction. So the quick way of doing that is we'll bring in a negative component. We can bring in that vector to the negative component and plug it into the motion here, and do the same thing here. Bring in a negative component, Plug in the vector into the negative, and this one into basically creating a positive and negative of the same motion. The reason why I like to do that is because I can create a rectangle using two points. And what we'll do is the plane is going to be this reference plane. It's not this green one, it's this one back here. Point A is going to be this point. Point B is going to be this point. So let's go to this one, then to this one, giving us the ability to pick the size in both directions. Now what happens is since, since we're doing it from the middle to each side, these are actually divided by two for it to give you the correct dimensions. So let's go to a division or times 0.5. So it depends on what you prefer. I like to do divided by two. I'll copy this one and divide it by two. When you do division by two, it'll give you a component that has a as an empty component or input, and then B as 2. So whatever you do division by, it'll give you the B as your input already kind of created for you. Yeah. Now with this, we also have the ability to get, do a fillet at the end. So let's go to radius. We'll go to 1.500. We have a few decimal points and we can change how that happens. So now let's take this, let's go to sweep one, or you could even be extrude along and we'll plug in our line. Let's plug the, our line into our section and the rectangle, no, that's incorrect. And sometimes when it's all the way over here and I don't want to go back, I double click on the wire, it creates a relay, and I plug in the rail, unplug the section, then you can delete the relay. It's just a little trick to save a little bit of time. Now let's decrease the size of all this stuff because it's obviously way, way, way too large. Let's go back down here. Now, in the same way that I did a um, graft, let's do that again. So list item, we'll go to graft. It'll do it to all of them, but we still need to disable the preview on this stuff. And you'll see that we have successfully created these really cool sections 
that go right to the end here. Now, if you don't like the way that they intersect, um, you can always extend the line. So all of these lines go to there. There's a command. Let's go here. Called extend curve. And we can pick a, so if we plug all of these in, I can go start and end 1.500. It increases the end mark. Why would you want to do that? Well, as you can see, all of these curves go to these different ones and we can change that. So like I said, if you don't want to go all the way to the ends, this is one way of doing it. We know that all of these go to the same one. So this wire goes to this one, which goes to all of those. It's the same. And we can change this one to this one. And you'll see that the extension keep going and kind of create some other cool effects. But the idea for this one is to turn these into straight sections. And of course, since it's all parametric, we could come here and change the sections to be straight sections like this. So hopefully you found that useful. Um, I'll clean this up a little bit and have it on the site, uh, on the YouTube portion of the site for you to download. Um, if you have any questions, make sure to let me know. Actually, right here at the end, I want to show one last trick that will be really useful. And it's, um, it's not as precise as this. This is really precise where we can change the exact dimensions. The other one's going to be a little bit more... Um, of an artistic thing that you can do with it. And actually there's a bunch of things that pop into my head that we can do with this, but I'll show you one of the other cool things that I think you all might like. So what I'm doing right now is I'm taking all of this stuff down here and I'm just dis disabling it, right? Cause I don't want to mess with the work that I've already done. And up here, I'm going to actually play around with some of these things. So one of the things that I want to play around with is basically delete all of this and go back to where we have the plane. And the reason why I say that is because, let's go back to one segment. And at the end of the segment, I wanna create a polygon. Or rather than a polygon, I think it's better for a circle and you'll see why. This circle is gonna be created at this plane and we'll give it a radius of 0.2. Now we can divide this curve using count. So we can just say uh, two less than nine. So we have a count from two into any none, right? With these points, I'll create a polyline and I'll actually close set boolean to true to close it which is cool because we can create one segment or more segments using this what we're going to do is the same thing but let's try this extrude along we'll use the base So I think it's the opposite. I think it's this one will go here and the curve will be this one. I think they're just uh, switched over. Oh, and I can use this one. Perfect. Okay. The reason why, because now we can change this to be straight section and we can even offset this. This could be a triangle of course and we can change this further and we can also do a fillet of the 
to round it off a little bit if we wanted to. And now let's go to graft. And we'll see that it's actually created that for all of them. Cool thing. So we can change type of segment using the subdivision. So even just using three, then two, we create planes that intersect. So, like I said, that's another really cool way that we can play around with this geometry. And why not just uh, throw out there one last thing that I feel like could be cool. And it's to do a twist around an axis. So we'll use this geometry. And the axis is going to be all of these curves. So they could either come out of here or we could do another output from here. Now these will take a little bit because it's actually have to twist all of them. Um, it's a little bit heavy. But as you can see, we have now twisted those forms relative to that axis that was extruded along. And the rotation angle, if we set it to degrees, we can be subtle and say 45. or get super crazy, go to 100, and you'll see that it'll start twisting around that center form. So I went through a bunch of the, uh, little tricks to create different sections with curves. Hopefully you found that useful. The idea for the most part is if you create the construction plane using one of the segments of lines, then you can create any geometry to extrude along that segment and therefore you can do that to the whole thing so that's the power of parametric design you can do a lot of things working with specific parameters it doesn't even have to be complicated or anything uh, they're just simple moves that could be uh, done specifically to the parameters of one object so uh, thank you for watching i will have this available and i hope to see you next time if you'd like to check out a few more things, I have my website, kupetidev.com, where you could find more YouTube scripts, a way to contact me, courses, and a script store. So thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you next time.